Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 31. First of all and foremost, I wanted to start by thanking all of you for supporting the channel and also to apologize for not being on top of posting every week. Um, as you know, and I'm sure some of you are experiencing this as well with the COVID-19 crisis, um, jobs are kind of tough right now and I haven't been able to dedicate uh, time uh, to the channel, but I'm hoping to get back on track soon, so I appreciate your patience. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. Our first question today is basic arithmetic. A bank robber is trying to find all the possible combinations to a safe. They know the combination is made up of these four items. A, 3, 2, and X. How many possible combinations exist? Okay, so here basically what they're asking you is what is known as a permutation. Okay, so a permutation is when uh, you can take several items, like here we have four items, and combine them and order them in any kind of several ways. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, one option would be to do it manually. So let's do one example manually. Let's say um, you have to eat, read, and work out today. Okay, so how many combinations, in how many different orders, rather, could you do this? Well, you could first eat, then read, and then work out. Or you could eat, work out, and then read. You could also read, eat, and then work out or read, work out, and then eat. Or finally, you could start your session working out, eating, then reading, or working out, reading, and then eating. Okay, all right, so you can see that this is a little bit of a tedious process to do, uh, but it's doable when you have few combinations. So in total, we would have six combinations. And the way that I like to think about it, like mathematically, um, is this. So aside from doing it manually, you could do it mathematically, which is what I'm about to show you. You could think about, you know, these three events that you have to do and how you want to place them in your calendar. OK, so let's say you have these three boxes, which represent three slots in your day. Um, and right now you have three possible options on your calendar. And then let's say you decide to eat first. Okay, so now you have two slots left on your calendar for today. And then you decide to read after you eat, so now you only have one slot left on your calendar. So if you take all those possible options together, so you multiply three, which is the number of um, possibilities that you had initially in your calendar or the number of slots available in your calendar. <clears throat> and then you multiply it by two, which is <clears throat> the second, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, options that you had. And then you multiply it by one, you can see that you get six, which is the same number that we obtained when we did this manually. Okay, so this is an example of a permutation. Now, if we go back to our question, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and we kind of approach it in the same way, let's think about the safe combination as this four uh, slot uh, system, okay? So they could either put the letters first, or they could put the numbers first, or they can mix them up together, etc. So let's take, take that calendar approach that we said before, and we said that, say that now, at the beginning, the robber has four options, right? So they can place uh, whatever number or letter in wherever slot in that um, uh, safe combination. Okay, so four. Um, and then they're going to decide to put one letter first. So now they have three uh, slots left on that safe combination. Then they put another number in, and now they have two slots left and then they've put another number in and that leaves them with one slot. Okay, so if you go ahead and you multiply these numbers together, that would give you 24 possible combinations. Okay, 
So um, Robert trying to find a combination to a safe made up of four numbers would give you 24 possible uh, combination options. Okay, so this is a way to do it, which I think is much easier, but if you just want to convince yourself, do it manually, uh, one by one, and you'll see that you get the same result. In this case, the answer is D. Question two is an applied arithmetic problem that looks at sequences. It says, Jerry earned $18 for her first year at his job, $22 his second year, $32 per hour, not per year, uh, his fourth year, how much will he earn in the fifth year? <clears throat> and they're giving you several options. Okay, so the first thing is just keep it simple. Um, write yourself a little table like this and just introduce all the information that they're giving you in the question, okay? Because this is the typical question where it's really easy to, to read stuff incorrectly and then mess it up, okay? So in the question, they're asking us how much will he earn in the fifth year? So that's our X value. And then they tell us that in the first year, he earned $18 an hour. Second year, $22 an hour. Third year, $27. Um, and they're not telling us what he earned in the fourth year. Okay, so at this point, what we want to do is we want to try to find out if there is a pattern or a sequence in how much he's earning. So if you look between year one and year two, how much more money is he earning? He's earning $4, right? And then if we look at year two to three, what's the difference between 27 and 22? It's $5, right? So it looks like the pattern is going to be that he's earning one lonely dollar per hour more every year. Okay, so the sequence would be next uh, $6. So we would expect him to earn $33 um, in the fourth year and then $7 more for the fifth year. Okay, so um, as we said, year four uh, would be $33 and then for year five, we would add those $7, which would give us $40. Okay, answer A. Question three is an algebra problem that looks at functions. In the function y is equal to x minus five plus 26, if x is minus 10, what is the value of y? So this is a pretty straightforward problem. All you have to do is introduce that X value that they give you into the question, into the formula uh, provided. And all you have to remember is to keep your signs um, straight, okay? So just remember to put, you know, if it's a negative sign or a positive sign incorrectly, because that could really mess up your question. So if you introduce that value of X, which is minus 10 into your equation, you would have um, minus 10 minus five in the brackets, plus 26. That would give you minus 15 plus 26, which gives you positive 11. And that's all there is to this question. That would be answer B. Question four is another algebra problem looking at dividing polynomials. And it tells you to simplify this expression, 6x squared plus 50x minus 2x. So sometimes these are kind of straightforward, sometimes they're a little bit tricky. Um, so what you have to do whenever you see a polynomial like this and they ask you to divide <clears throat> is to try to find, um, to factor rather a common term. Okay, so try to take a factor from the, the numerator, the number on the top, and kind of factor it out of that um, equation. So in this case, <clears throat> excuse me, the factor that, uh, that I chose was um, 2x. Okay, so if you multiply 2x by 3x, that would give you 6x squared, which you can see in the original equation. And then if you multiply 2x by 25, that would give you 50x which you also see in the numerator. Okay, so now 
look at that, how wonderful. You have 2x divided by 2x, so you can go ahead and get rid of those 2x's. All right, so your correct answer would be C. Our final question today is a geometry problem. And as always, uh, please, please, please remember to um, become familiar with all the formulas in the geometry problems. Just make sure you do a few problems here and there so that you know how to use these formulas because this, these can potentially be very easy points, uh, but you have to know, you know which formulas to use and how to use them. All right, so the question says, an ice cream cone has a spherical shaped ice cream scoop inside it. One half of the ice cream is visible above the rim of the cone. What is the surface area of the ice cream scoop? All right, and they're giving you that ice cream there and with the white scoop. And the other uh, data that they're giving you is the number five, and that is representing the diameter, okay, the diameter. So the diameter is the distance across that uh, sphere. So remember that if you wanted to find out the radius, the radius is half of the diameter, so it would be 2.5. And now all you have to do is find, find out the formula for the surface area of a sphere. And again, this will be provided for you in the exam. This is the formula. Surface area is equal to 4 pi radius squared. So all you have to do is take that value for the radius, 2.5, and you're going to plug it into your equation like that. Um, you would go ahead and... Um, do 2.5 squared and then multiply that by 4 and that gives you 25 pi. Answer B. Okay folks, well I hope you found that useful. Again, my apologies for kind of dropping the ball these days. Uh, hopefully things will come back to normal uh, soon enough. And I just wanted to again uh, thank you for your support and for being there and I want to really congratulate you and honor you uh, for showing up even during these, these difficult times and working on your GED. As always, stay positive and stay strong. Have a good one.